Very good. Well, we'll go ahead and get started now. So today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about some of the uh, extension and research things that are going on in our UFIFIS Beef Cattle and Forge Economics program. So my name is Chris Pravat. I've been here for three and a half years as our beef cattle and forage economist here um, at the Range Cattle REC. Um, I, the majority of my uh, appointment is uh, focused on extension work, you know, sharing the, the tips on profitability and, and the different research uh, that we found that can really enhance the, the profitability of, of beef cattle and forage operations here in the state of Florida. So as we get started today, um, I think what I'm going to start with our, our, our revenue side of the equation as we look at um, uh, Florida cattle herds and, and what they're re really receiving on prices here in 2017. Um, so what we've seen so far in 2017 is a seasonal trend that didn't happen for us. You know, we projected that uh, our typical seasonal trend that we see in terms of feeder calf prices is a, is a you know, a really a, a late spring high to a, you know a summer that maybe you only lose one to two percent and then typically we have about an eight percent decline in prices from that August uh, to our, our maybe that October early November low and we didn't have that here in 2017 uh, specifically not on these uh, feeder calf prices and so I think that you know without this price decline the majority of our producers were able to stay profitable here um, in 2017. And then on the slaughter cow side, you know, about 20 to 25 percent of our uh, slaughter cows um, or our cull cow revenue is going to really be contributed to these slaughter cows. Now, on the slaughter cow side of things for 2017, we have seen that decline. So the majority of our lower class meats here in 2017, we've seen this decline in price. You know, it's up to $100 a head from those July, August highs to where we are today. So that makes a significant impact whenever we look at the profitability of our Florida cow herds um, uh, for 2017 here. So we didn't have that seasonal decline on the feeder calves, but we've seen it on the slaughter cows. I think that shows there's a differentiation between the premium cuts and maybe some of our lower quality cuts here during 2017. And that's a trend that we look to continue moving into 2018. Um, whenever we th are thinking about the driver, what's really helping drive our feeder calf prices uh, for our cow-calf herds here in Florida, um, slaughter steer prices are going to have a, a major impact on that. So whenever we make that projection out there, what uh, our fat cattle are going to be selling for out of the feedlot, um, that's really going to help drive what we're going to be receiving for our feeder calves here in Florida. And we've seen, you know, our seasonal low typically occurs during that late, mid, middle to late summer time period. And what we've seen this year is maybe a September, this year as well as last year is a September to October low, and then rising off of those highs. So, uh, you know, if, if demand stays where we currently have it projected at for 2018, um, we may could stay at these same price levels uh, here for our slaughter steer prices, then those really holding up some of those feeder calf prices as well. Whenever we're looking at export demand, really what's going to help determine, you know, where exports are going to go for, you know, our next several months is really going to be um, those beef byproduct values. And what you've seen over the second half of 2017 so far is these declining beef, by, beef byproduct values. You know, the beef tongue, the hide, the awful values. Um, really, this sets, uh, sets us up for maybe some declining demand. And anytime we have these increasing supplies from our U.S. cattle herd expansion with maybe a declining uh, demand in terms of these hide and awful values, that's really going to limit that potential increase that we could see in 2018. So with those prices, I think, you know, we're looking at them very short term, really looking at the cattle cycle as a whole here. Now, typically, we know that these cattle cycles, cycles are about 10 to 12 years in length. Obviously, you know, they can be much shorter or they can be longer here. And so as, as time progresses in this cattle cycle, we'll start to, to know a little bit more about the phases and the profits and losses that were experienced. 
you know, we keep thinking about the top of the price cycle, the you know the the highs that we really saw there during 2013 to 2015. Uh, then we entered into this downward price transition, where the highs are behind us and uh, we're moving to lower prices, typically on an annual basis, because of the uh, the um, the the cycle that's at really at play here. So we felt like this downward price transition would occur between 2015 and 2019. Then we get to that bottom of the price cycle. You know, if we really think about herd expansion and where we really want to be expanding our, our beef cattle herds here in Florida, it's at that bottom of the cattle price cycle when our replacement heifers, our brood cows, are worth the least uh, during the, the, the cattle price cycle. That's when we really want to be getting into this industry as a whole, is the, is in the end of the downward price transition or the bottom of the price cycle. And then really, you know, taking us higher into that upward price transition somewhere out there at 2021 to 2024 and then 2025 to 2027 maybe seeing another peak again like we did in 2013 to 2015. Now with these phases of our cattle price cycle we know that there's going to be projected profits and losses and so this is our uh, our expected profits and losses for you know average good management uh, cattle operations that we uh, that we make projections for so you know that top of the price cycle we saw profits anywhere from four hundred to six hundred dollars ahead um, we've been in the downward price transition uh, for three years now in this downward price transition we're in that uh, we've been in that fifty to maybe two hundred dollars ahead um, uh, period for for the many of our Florida cow, cow calf producers here um, but overall it's declining profitability as prices continue to erode uh, we're going to see uh, lower levels of profitability for many of our cow calf producers the bottom of the cattle price cycle this is typically going to be where you know uh, revenues really aren't going to be able to meet even the variable costs of many of our cow calf operations and then we get into that upward price transition where you've got profits and losses, um, but overall there's improving profitability during this time period. So I want to switch just a little bit about some of the um, extension things that we've done in our beef cattle and forage economics program here in 2017. Um, the majority of the, the work that we've really been focusing on is very forage focused. Um, so whether that's you know doing grazing schools or uh, our um, our own cattlemen's college there at the, the cattlemen's association this year, we've really been focused on forage economics. So this year at the Florida Cattlemen's Association, we had the 2017 Ona Cattlemen's College, um, and our focus this year was on forages. So we, we did stuff with soil fertility, we did stuff with uh, with weed science, with agronomy, and we also focused on forage economics um, at this meeting. And some of the things that we discussed with producers uh, on the economics of grazing these forages, it's not it's not only you know what kind of forage stand that we have. Uh, the increases in forage quality that we can get from different forages, um, as well as the increases in forage quantity that we can get from um, from soil fertility, but it's also focusing on that cost of forage production. You know, we've got to put all these tools that we have together in order to make an economic situation for our producers that are grazing our forages here in Florida. So we looked at three of our key economic factors whenever we're looking at forage economics. Um, the first one is obviously cost of production per acre. We do this with budgeting. Um, we have to make estimates in terms of you know dry matter production per acre um, that we're really pr producing in order to to get at you know maybe what's our dry matter um, cost per ton in order to produce forages. Whenever we're comparing that with other feedstuffs or or hay. Um, and then we got to look at, you know, how much are we getting utilized versus how much we're wasting in terms of forage economics. And I'll just go through a, a couple slides here on um, our cost of forage production here in Florida. And obviously it focuses on those key factors. With those factors, we can tell us a lot about, you know, what our cost per dry matter ton is going to be. So there's a lot of numbers out up here because I think it, it shows that how much uh, diversification there is between our different uh, cow calf producers here in Florida. You know, we've got a cost of forage production per acre anywhere from $100 to $300 per acre. Um, you're looking at dry matter tons produced here, anywhere from four tons to maybe nine tons. 
And then we've got to make an assumption on, on, on forage utilization. Um, and that's going to tell us what our cost per dry meter ton is, really is um, for Florida here in 2017. And then there's those scenarios that we really start to focus on is what's economical levels of dry matter cost per um, dry matter cost per forage ton here and really getting it in the animal not just pricing it out there you know in the pasture or um, or at a, a com commodity facility here and you know typically what we're looking at um, in terms of our warm season perennials anywhere we can get them in that light blue section of, uh, of this chart here anywhere from that uh, 26 to to 49 dollars per dry matter ton for these warm season perennials you know we're not talking about forages that have you know exceptionally high values in terms of quality um, we've got to stay in this lower cost of production range and then we, we put that on a, a dollars per cow basis you know in terms of we really got to be looking at it in terms of what's it costing us per cow calf unit to to uh, to look at that grazing cost per year here um, and there's going to be a lot of scenarios here where they just won't work for us. These are scenarios that we don't need our producers focusing on here in Florida. Um, so anything in that red area there. So I think that tells us in terms of pasture costs as well as our stocking rate there that uh, we can't have a really large stocking rate in terms of five acres per brood cow and also have a very high pasture, uh, pasture cost of production. So we can't be really high input and, and not be intensive in terms of our grazing here. Um, and any, typically what we're seeing in terms of these grazing costs per year um, on a lot of our Florida ranches is somewhere in that $100 to, to $250 range whenever we consider the, the different, you know, the stockpiling, the haying, um, a, a lot of our fertilizer and establishment costs here. Um, so that's where we really got to be focusing on is uh, these grazing costs per cow per year. Um, obviously, I've been doing a lot of work with winter annuals as well as summer annuals, um, and I think it's the same formula for us in terms of determining whether these annuals can really be profitable for us getting into um, uh, our forage economics here. And obviously, it, it's a uh, you, we can't necessarily be great at one of these variables. It's going to take a combination in terms of getting good levels of production utilization and cost in order to make these things economical for us. The last thing um, on the, the forage economics here that we've been doing is this is a uh, something we've been doing um, with a couple of our large ranches in Florida is looking at you know hay versus supplement versus stockpiling grazing, stockpile grazing and supplement. It just shows you that you know the huge impact that stockpiling a different for, different uh, uh, levels of, of, of forages out there can really make on the financial impact of our cow calf herds. So getting away from feeding hay as much as possible and really looking at grazing during those um, 90 to 120, 136 day feeding period that we're really looking at here. Um, another thing that uh, we were able to do in our extension program here in, in 2017 uh, as at the Southern Outlook Conference, we were able to uh, um, to give our, our forage and hay outlook from for the University of Florida. Uh, and one of the things we were really focused on is that impact that we've had here in 2017 versus previous years in terms of hay production and hay quality levels. You see our southern 14 states, and this is what we focus on in terms of uh, moving hay in and out of these southern 14 states. We see that the detrimental drought that we had there in 2012, um, you know, from moving from 2012 to 2013, um, an additional uh, 6 million tons of hay um, being produced here um, in our southern 14 states. That shows you that impact that Oklahoma and Texas really took um, in 2012. And so we, we, we make this uh, these, uh, these changes here from 2012, 2013 to 2014, moving here into 2016. And what we really wanted to see was, you know, that 15% change from 2012 all the way to 2016, um, our percent change from our base. And what's that going to look like as we look at our 2017 production levels here um, in Florida with all these different factors that really affected us? So what factors affected us? We have excessive rainfall, rainfall in many of our states 
that obviously adversely affected our forage quality um, as well as our quantity of hay production. Um, you had major hurricanes in terms of Harvey and Irma that uh, adversely impacted our hay production, um, harvest storage um, in many of these states that were affected, not only you know Florida but places like uh, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, uh, and Texas were, were uh, adversely impacted here. And then there was time periods where maybe early spring that we were um, adversely affected because of the drought where we may have to some feed, some additional feedstuffs to really meet those livestock needs here in 2017. So obviously, you know, just looking at the economics behind these factors, uh, we're projecting that we're going to see higher hay prices here in our southern 14 states during our 2017 and 2018 time period. Um, whenever we're looking at these southern 14 states, looking at that 2012 to 2016 average, and looking at our USDA estimates in terms of a uh, 2017 percent adjustment here. Um, you know, we're looking at two million tons less in 2017 versus 2016. You know, so there's going to be a lot of producers when we get to to winter, to late winter, that are really going to be looking for some hay supplies that aren't even there in terms of production. Um, so we've really been encouraging our producers uh, that need some additional hay to lock up those hay supplies um, in terms of uh, 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 of feeding that cow during the winter here. Uh, another project uh, that uh, we really got started on in, in January 2016 was talking about value of gain, the additional pounds that we're putting on animals and what's that really worth. Um, so Daryl Peel gave a presentation on the impact that corn and other feedstuffs is really having on value of gain. So we took that work and uh, we added some additional things to it, but this is just a couple of, of, of you know, uh, things for us to really think about. In terms of, of cow-calf production or stocker production in the southeast, we typically think that you know low corn prices um, are really going to help these, these feeder calf prices if we're selling really light feeder calves, or they may help some of our stocker, um, our, uh, stocker cattle prices in terms of um, those feedlots having uh, a lot of feed at a really low price. But if we look at historical levels of, of higher levels of corn prices, what that really means for us is uh, whenever those really high corn prices, that's when we're the, the, the most value in terms of putting gain on calves. That's when it's going to pay for us the most here. Um, so you look at you know what our, Oklahoma, our Omaha corn prices are here in 2017. Um, you know they're at low levels compared to 2016 as well as 2017. Um, so we're, we're at really low levels in terms of our corn prices. And then whenever we look out there in terms of, you know, 2017 all the way to 2019, looking at that futures market for corn, you know, maybe it gets back up to the $4 level out there is our current uh, futures price. But overall, you know, we're not getting to those exceptional levels. So what's that doing for us on uh, the cow-calf and the stocker side? Well, this cheap corn, it's keeping our cost of gain low in the feedlot, which is limiting our value of gain on stalker and cow calf operations. So those of us that are looking to put additional pounds um, on feeder calves, on feeder cattle, that's on grass, it's really limiting that value of gain and really limiting uh, the additional profitability of maybe preconditioning or just putting additional gain on cattle here. Um, so whenever we're making this comparison in terms of value of gain, we've also got to think about the cost of gain um, that's really impacting uh, the net profitability of our herds. So cost of gain here is uh, $74 a hundred weight or 74 cent in the feedlots right now in terms of our feeding costs of gain. Um, and what's that going to mean in terms of our projected value of gains if we went ahead and started placing animals in the feedlots right now? Um, right now in terms of value of gain, our feedlot projections, um, if you're looking at an 800 pound feeder steer, November's trading at $158, $158 a hundred weight. Um, live cattle's at $126 a hundred weight. Um, there's our, our value of gain formula there. In order, to the, the additional gain that we're really going to be putting on that animal is worth $437 there. So putting 550 pounds on this animal, that's going to give us a value of gain of 76, uh, $79, 79 cents per, per pound of gain there. We just talked about, 
you know, uh, 74 cents in terms of our cost of gain. That's going to give us about five cents to play with. So our net value of gain, um, if 74 cents is our total cost, every pound that we put on is only going to be worth five cents in our feedlots right now. Um, switching gears just a little bit in terms of wrapping this thing up, uh, if we're looking at some of the current uh, research projects that I'm really focused on, it's going to be our perennial peanut project that's in Mariana right now. Um, it's our perennial peanut with bahia grass strips along with uh, uh, looking at unfertilized bahia grass as well as fertilized bahia grass. Um, so we're, uh, we've just completed our second year of this project. We've got some really interesting results coming in um, and we're really excited about you know getting this system out to producers. In 2017-2018 uh, funding is available um, through Equipped to, uh, to plant some of these perennial peanut bahia grass strips. And so we'll be continuing this perennial peanut bahia grass project for another two years uh, there at our Mariana Research Center. Two of the new research projects that I have for 2018, I just received a word that we, uh, that I received a grant on our warm season annual forages. And uh, back in September, I received word that we were going to be starting a new alfalfa project that we received that grant as well. So as we look at uh, our warm season annual forages, we'll have two sites, one in North Florida, one in South Florida. And then our alfalfa project, we're looking at the economics of producers really grazing alfalfa in Florida. That's going to be located at Mariana and then Citra. Um, so those are two of our exciting projects that we're hopefully going to uh, get started here in 2018. So as I, you know, I summarize where cow calf and stalker producers really need to be focusing on. Um, in terms of uh, on the cow calf side, all we can really focus on right now is just continue to wage this war on forage and feeding costs, focusing on our management resources, reducing waste where we can, um, obviously preparing for that next drought. We saw uh, remnants of it here in, in 2017, um, but continuing to focus on that for cow calf producers. And on the stocker producer side, you know, with corn limiting the value of gain, this value of gain in that 50 to 75 cent time period really isn't very uh, appealing for us. Uh, there was times where that value of gain got much higher uh, in, in 2017. Those are the places that we're really going to have to uh, get focused and lock in those prices for stocker producers. Um, so they've got to find ways to lower their value of gains moving forward. Um, so I appreciate your attention today, and I hope you have a very profitable 2017. Um, and we'll take any questions at the conclusion of the, the webinar, but we're going to um, shift gears and look at our uh, agronomy uh, uh, program highlights now. So thank you very much.